Hello everyone, today we will discuss about pressure and volume changes during cardiac cycle. Okay? Before starting pressure and volume changes, let us discuss about phases of cardiac cycle. You can see cardiac cycle has systole and diastole. You can see here, atrial systole that is 0.1 second, atrial diastole is 0.7 second. Ventricular systole that is 0.3 seconds and ventricular diastole is 0.5 second. Okay? Now, so you can see here, these are our two atria and these are two ventricles. Now we will discuss different phases of cardiac cycle and pressure changes. Okay, Starting with first pressure changes in the ventricle. You can see here, during atrial systole, atria are contracting, you can see here. This is equal to last rapid feeling phase, means feeling of the ventricles they take place. Okay, This curve shows this one is ventricular pressure change okay so starting with the atrial systole this is the atrial systole part this one so what happens during the atrial systole there is increase in the sorry there is increase in the intraventricular pressure okay you can see here right ventricular pressure right intraventricular pressure increases uh, 6 to 7 mmhg and left intraventricular pressure that is about 7 to 8 millimeter of mercury okay this is here see this curve okay next is ventricular systole you can see here now this is the ventricular systole first phase of the ventricular systole that is isovolumetric contraction period the volume of uh, ventricle remains same and ventricles they are contracting as a closed chamber so what happens this pressure rises sharply you can see here there is both the valves are closed and ventricles are contracting as a closed chamber so intraventricular pressure rises rapidly you can see here so in this phase pressure rises rapidly okay then next is rapid ejection after that what happens just I will, if i will show you schematically you can see here in isovolumetric contraction period what happens is both the valves atrioventricular valve this is schematic diagram and pulmonary and aortic valve they are both are all are closed okay and ventricles are contracting now what happens when the pressure inside the ventricle increases now there is opening of your semi lunar valves pulmonary and aortic valve so what happens there is ejection of the blood from ventricle into the systemic vessel so you can see here initially during rapid ejection phase ventricular contraction that is powerful and therefore again rise in the pressure Okay, intraventricular pressure. This is the reason why intraventricular pressure is increased during rapid ejection phase in spite of ejection of blood. Okay, so here what happens? Uh, left side, this is, this is right one, this is left one. So left side intraventricular pressure rises as high as aortic that is 120 mmHg and left, uh, sorry, right intraventricular pressure that becomes 25 millimeter of mercury. Okay, next is, uh, this is you can see again, this diagram shows change in the pressure you can see here this one as you have discussed during this atrial systole there is increase in the ventricular pressure then during isovolumetric contraction period again there is rapid rise during ejection phase initially during rapid ejection phase there is increase in the pressure and during slow ejection phase now there is decrease in the pressure is falling down okay we will discuss here so you can see here, this is the slow ejection phase or so it's slow ejection period. There is no further ventricular contraction and therefore intraventricular pressure starts falling. Okay. Then comes your protodiastole, this one. Before isovolumetric contraction period, there is protodiastole. Okay. Here what happens, ventricles, they start relaxing and therefore intraventricular pressure decreases. Okay. And semilunar valves, they close. When, intra, when intraventricular pressure is less than aortic and pulmonary pressure okay so during this phase protodiastole this intraventricular pressure starts falling okay and then isovolumetric relaxation phase there is further reduction sharp decrease in the intraventricular pressure and that decreases here it is uh, at the beginning of isovolumetric relaxation period intraventricular pressure is 80 mmhg in the left ventricle and about 2 to 3 mmHg in the, uh, sorry, from that it reaches to 2 to 3 millimeter of mercury, okay. Now, uh, so this is isovolumetric relaxation period. Next is rapid feeling phase. After that, you can see after isovolumetric relaxation, now there is feeling of the ventricle. But here, there is no much increase in the pressure. Why? Because ventricles are relaxing. 
in spite of feeling of the ventricle because ventricles are relaxing the pressure is slightly higher than zero okay so during rapid as well as slow filling phase slow filling phase is also known as diastasis the ventricular pressure is slightly above zero okay so this are intraventricular pressure changes next is pressure changes in the aorta okay you can see here this curve shows pressure changes in the aorta very important thing here is pressure changes in the aorta that is between 80 to 120 mm of mercury only it will not go less than 80 mm of mercury okay and this can be recorded by using catheter and now starting with the first phase during atrial systole you can see here this is the atrial systole phase aortic pressure that is around 80 mm of mercury okay next is ventricular systole you can see here this is the aortic pressure curve okay which fluctuates fluctuates between 80 to 120 okay so here during ventricular systole what happens intraventricular pressure rises and reaches uh, above you can see here along with this ventricular pressure increase aortic pressure also starts increasing okay and intraventricular pressure rises and reaches above the aortic pressure in the beginning of the ventricular ejection phase okay here okay but with the opening of the aortic valve when aortic valve they open at the end of isovolumetric contraction period okay aortic pressure also starts rising and it reaches maximum 120 millimeter of mercury at the end of rapid ejection period you can see here and during rapid ejection phase this aortic pressure is slightly higher than your ventricular pressure okay and in reduced ejection phase again aortic pressure as well as intraventricular pressure both have started falling down okay then comes prototiastole this before isovolumetric contraction period what happens here aortic pressure is slightly higher than left ventricular pressure okay and due to slight higher a higher pressure in the aorta there is backward flow of the blood blood flows backward and that results in the incisuria or diacrotic note okay uh, that is known as diacrotic note and after that during isovolumetric relaxation period and rapid filling and slow filling phase this aortic pressure falls smoothly and continuously to about 80 millimeter of mercury but because of elasticity of aorta this pressure will not will never fall below 80 millimeter of mercury okay so this is about pressure changes in the aorta next is pressure changes in the atria okay in right and left atrium this pressure changes they are recorded with the help of intracardiac catheter left atrial pressure that is determined by measuring pulmonary capillary wedge pressure wedge pressure and jugular venous pressure that is equal to right atrial pressure so here when we are measuring atrial pressure we will find three waves a c and b wave three positive waves and three negative x x1 and y okay so during atrial systole you can see here this one intra atrial pressure because of atrial systole atrial feeling there is increase in the atrial pressure right intra atrial pressure that is about four to six millimeter of mercury and left atrial pressure is about seven to eight millimeter of mercury and this is recorded as positive wave in the jugular venous pressure and that is a okay this one with atrial relaxation in the later part there is decrease in the pressure okay then comes isovolumetric contraction period again you can see isovolumetric contraction period there is sharp rise in the intraventricular pressure because of increase in the intraventricular pressure you can see here suppose your two atria two true ventricles are there in both the valves are closed during isovolumetric contraction period and ventricles are contracting so this pressure increases and because of increase in the pressure there is bulging of AV valve here and because of bulging of AV valve there is increase in the intra atrial pressure and this gives you C wave okay here fine then during rapid and slow ejection phases rapid ejection and slow ejection phase intra atrial pressure decreases sharply as papillary muscles they contract with the contraction of ventricular wall and pull down the AV valve and there is decrease in the intra atrial pressure because of relaxation of atria okay then comes ventricular diastole here isovolumetric relaxation period here also there is increase in the intra atrial pressure and this is this gives you V wave V wave that is because of ventricular feeling okay AV valve 
is closed again here and it we are relaxing but it gives positive wave that is because of feeling of the ventricle there is gradual rise in the atrial pressure during this phase during rapid and slow feeling phase at the end of isovolumetric relaxation you can see there is rapid and slow feeling phase because av valve they are open and therefore blood flows from atria into the ventricle so this intraatrial pressure decreases so these are different uh, changes in the intraatrial pressure last one that is volume changes in the ventricle okay so you can see here this this curve shows volume changes in the ventricle during atrial systole you can see atria are contracting but ventricles are receiving blood so there is feeling of the ventricle so what happens that intraventricular volume increases and at the end of atrial systole or it is equal to end of ventricular diastole the volume of blood in the ventricle that is equal to end diastolic volume okay at the end of diastole and that is about 130 ml okay then next is ventricular systole now when ventricles are contracting first phase of ventricular systole that is isovolumetric contraction period okay you can see here both the valves are closed and ventricles are co contracting as a closed cavity. This is isovolumetric contraction period. So there is no change in the volume. Volume will not change. Okay. Then comes at the end of isovolumetric contraction period. What happens? There is opening of semilunar valves. Semilunar valves, they are aortic and pulmonary valves. Okay. So when aortic and pulmonary valves opens, what happens? There is ejection of the blood. So rapid and slow ejection. So during ejection phase, what happens? Blood is ejected out. So now what happens, there is decrease in the ventricular volume, you can see here. And at the end of systole, volume remains in the ventricle that is equal to end systolic volume and that is, seven, that is 50 ml. Why 50 ml? Because 70 ml is ejected from this 130 ml, 70 to 80 ml. 70 to 80 ml is your stroke volume which is ejected. Okay. Now, there is one terminology, ejection fraction. What is ejection fraction? Ejection fraction that is fraction of the end diastolic volume which is ejected okay, per beat and that is about 60 to 65 percent that is ejection fraction okay. That is one of the good indicator for cardiac function okay. During echocardiography this is one of the good indicator which is to be recorded. And uh, in the last rapid feeling phase again ventricle is in the diastole so that is increase in the ventricular volume okay till it increases till the end of diastole okay so at the end of diastole volume becomes 130 around 120 to 130 ml okay so during protodiastole then isovolumetric relaxation there is no change in the volume but rapid and slow feeling phase there is feeling of the ventricle so ventricular volume increases okay so this is all about pressure and volume changes during cardiac cycle. Thank you so much.